Hey, Victor. Hey, Nora. I can't wait to be home. This business trip has been a long one. It sure has. God, I miss you so much when you're away from home. Ever since we moved to the suburbs, it's been a bit of a shock to the system. I miss my friends in the city. I know you do. You've made some big sacrifices, Nora. But after my promotion at work, I just feel it's the right time for a change. And besides, the schools out here are a lot better than in the city. And we're also closer to my family, so, you know, they can help with childcare. I don't need help with childcare. These kids of ours are angels. We sure have raised two great kids. I just hoped that when we moved to the suburbs, people would be, I don't know, friendlier, I guess? What do you mean? I don't know. I'm getting the feeling that people around here are pretty stuck in their ways. They don't really like people who move from the inner city. Oh, come on, Nora. That's not true. I grew up in the suburbs. The people who live there are very kind and generous people in my experience. What makes you think that they don't like us? Well, Rose, for example, our neighbor, she keeps going through our mailbox. And when I asked her why, she just said she thought it was hers. Rose has always been a little strange. She's just a bit quirky is all. She's harmless. She also sprayed one of our children with a garden hose the other day. What? Yeah. Joy came into the house drenched head to toe in water because she accidentally walked on Rose's lawn. Who hoses down a child like that? Well, we have told Joy and David not to go wandering off like that. Maybe it'll teach them a few lessons about trespassing. It's hardly trespassing, Victor, and Joy is five years old. She probably just wanted to say hello. Well, Rose isn't the only person living on our road. My sister lives a five-minute walk away. You can always go and drop by Beth's house for a lemonade. Oh, come on, Victor. Beth's never liked me. What do you mean? I mean she's never liked me. What gives you that impression? Well, she's never once wished me a happy birthday. And I've been married to you for seven years. She's forgetful. She's rude. Hey, that's my sister you're talking about. You haven't exactly been the friendliest to her. I think she's scared of you. Oh, because I told her she was stuck up once at Christmas four years ago? We were both drunk. That's a long time to bear a grudge. And I apologized to her. Well, maybe this is a good opportunity to finally become friends. You live five minutes away from her now, and she's pregnant, so she'll be looking at you for advice. Victor, she's not interested in being my friend, and she's certainly not interested in baby advice. Because if she was, then maybe I would have been invited to her baby shower. Oh, come on, you'll be invited to that. Anyway, historically speaking, it's not the mother's job to organize her own baby shower. That's up to her friends and family. Well, Beth is organizing her own baby shower, and she's already sent out the invites. What? How do you know? Can you stop playing devil's advocate for one minute, Victor, and just believe me? I know Beth has sent out the invites to her baby shower because Trudy, who is also my friend, received an invite in the mail last week and asked me if I was going to, to which I responded by saying that I would have been if I'd been invited, which I hadn't. I'm sure Beth would have invited you, and I'm not playing devil's advocate here. Well, unless my invitation has literally gotten lost in the mail, I haven't been invited. I think you should talk to Beth. And say what? Hey, Beth, I hear you're having a baby shower. Want to invite me? Well, you could be a little less forward than that. But something along those lines, yeah. You never know. It might help clear the air. I'm not just going to invite myself to her house, pour myself a glass of freshly squeezed lemonade, and clear the air with her. Well, text her then. Extend an olive branch. I'm sure there's a simple misunderstanding at the bottom of all of this. And it would really mean a lot to me if you two got over your petty differences with each other. You really are both alike. There's no reason why you can't become the best of friends. And if you do, then your life in the suburbs will get a lot easier, Nora. Trust me. Well, I guess you're right. I want to get along with your sister, too. There's no reason why we can't be friends and try and get over our grievances with each other. Just text her. She's my sister. I promise you, if I thought she was a bad person, then I'd tell you not to bother. But she's got a good heart. Okay, Victor, I'll do it for you. I love you. I love you too, Nora. Hey, Beth. Nora. Hey. How are you doing? Settling into the neighborhood okay? Yeah, I guess I am. I'm still trying to get over Rose's quirks, but everyone seems friendly enough. Rose sure is quirky. 
She takes some getting used to, but she'll warm up to you eventually, I'm sure. So, you're pregnant! I know. That's so exciting, Beth! I'm so happy for you! Thank you, Nora. That means a lot. If you need any advice or tips about pregnancy, then I'm always here. Or even if you want a friendly ear, you know, you just want to complain about Greg. I'm here too. Thank you, Nora, but I'll be okay. Well, actually, um, I was hoping we could hang out more. I'm living in the neighborhood now, and I don't know many people here, and I thought since you are my husband's sister that we could hang out. I don't know. I'm really busy these days. I don't want to sound rude or anything, but I'm going to try not to socialize so much while I'm pregnant. I read somewhere that your baby can be very susceptible. If you become ill, they can be born prematurely, apparently. I have a very weak immune system, and I'm going to try and keep myself away from people for a while. It's nothing personal, Nora. I just want to protect me, baby. Oh, well, I wouldn't come near you if I wasn't feeling good, but I'm not carrying any infectious diseases at the moment. I go for monthly checkups, so you don't have to worry about that. All the same, it's better to err on the side of caution. I would hate for any complications to arise during my pregnancy. And again, it's nothing personal, Nora. Well, I'm kind of getting the feeling it is a bit. Why would you think that? Well, we haven't exactly been the best of friends since I married your brother. That's true, but it's not for lack of trying. What do you mean? I have tried to be nice to you, Nora, but that Christmas, I saw your true colors. I just didn't like the way you were talking to your mom, uh, to Victor. I had a few drinks, and I said some things that I probably shouldn't have, but... Holding on to a grudge like that for four years? I apologized to you, Beth. Is that not enough? It's not just that. Okay, well, what is it then? I just don't like the way you act like you're better than everyone around you. You're an arrogant person, Nora. I'm an arrogant person? I'm the one who reached out to you, Beth. I'm the one who's trying to clear the air here. I'm the one who's making a genuine effort to try and be friends. And I'm certainly not the one who is making up a lame excuse why they can't get over their differences. Lame excuse? Yeah, a lame excuse. That whole thing about not wanting to socialize with anyone while you're pregnant, that's just such a flagrant lie, Beth. Oh yeah, what makes you assume that then, Nora? Because if that were true, then you wouldn't be inviting friends over to your house for a baby shower next weekend, would you? You heard about that? Yeah, I heard about that. My friend Trudy asked me if I was going, and I said that I wasn't invited, so sadly not. Imagine moving into the same neighborhood as your sister-in-law and not being invited to her baby shower over something you said to her over four years ago. How petty is that? Do you know how lonely I've been since moving to the suburbs? It was stupid of me to even hope that you could be cordial to me yet. Never mind, actually, be my friend. Listen, Nora, I'm sorry. Maybe... Maybe I've been too harsh on you. I just feel very betrayed by you. Over that stuck-up comment? N no not by that. By what then? Well, when I had a miscarriage a couple of years back, I didn't hear anything from you. I know I'm a private person and all, but I was suffering. And I thought that you would at least reach out to me, but there was nothing. And after that, I just felt like you didn't care about me. And after the miscarriage, I couldn't bear to see you playing happy family all the time. You have two amazing kids, and I was just so jealous of your life. Beth? Yeah? What miscarriage? My miscarriage? It happened a couple of years ago. You must have known. No, I never heard about that. But I told Victor about it, and my mom. Did Victor not tell you? No, Victor did not tell me about that. Oh my god. Beth, I'm so, so sorry. I swear to you, I had no idea. Victor never told me. I don't know why he didn't do that. But I would have absolutely sent you my heartfelt condolences if I had known. I'm not a terrible person, Beth, and that sounds like an awful thing that happened to you. I can't imagine the pain you must have gone through. It was a terrible time for me, and for Greg, but now... We have another precious life that is coming into our lives, and I would like for my baby to have an aunt. I would love to be an aunt! Oh, Beth, this has all been such a huge misunderstanding. I'm so sorry that I came across as callous. It was never my intention. 
And I'm sorry for jumping to conclusions. I knew that there was something more going on here. Yeah, Victor, I'm going to get to the bottom of this. I'm sure he had his reasons. Well, they better be good ones. Nora, I'm sorry it's taken us this long to put aside our differences. And I would love you to come to my baby shower. That is, uh, if you would still like to attend. Of course, I would love to come to your baby shower, Beth. Thank you for inviting me. No problem. And you're welcome round to my house whenever you want. I'll see you soon, Beth. See you soon, Nora. Take care now. Victor, you better be in a plane or dead. Or so help me God, I will kill you myself. Nora, what's wrong? What's gotten into you? Well, Victor, I just had a little conversation with your sister. Oh no, it didn't go well, did it? Well, actually, Victor, it did go surprisingly well. So well, in fact, that your sister and I are officially friends now, and I'm invited to her baby shower over the weekend. That's amazing news, Nora. See, I told you you two would work it out. And I think I played a small part in that, if I don't say so myself. Oh, you played a part, Victor, and it was no small part. You actually played a pretty big role in making sure your sister hated my guts for the last couple of years. What? No, I didn't. All I've ever wanted is for the two of you to get along. What do you mean, Nora? I mean that she has hated me for two years because I didn't so much as send her a sorry for your loss when she lost her baby, when she miscarried two years ago. And I thought to myself, that's strange. I had no idea that she had a miscarriage. Absolutely none. But you did, didn't you, Victor? So can you tell me why? Why, Victor, didn't you tell me your sister had a miscarriage? Because she told me not to tell anyone outside the family. Do you not consider me part of your family, Victor? Of course I do, but I assumed that she meant her immediate family. And besides, this whole thing happened less than a year after you two had fallen out. You weren't on speaking terms. I thought by her saying, don't tell anyone outside the family, that she was literally telling me not to tell you. But you tell your wife things, Victor. Big, important things about your family. Beth has been thinking this whole time that I'd been some kind of callous, heartless person that didn't care that she had lost a child. But in reality, my dumbass husband was the reason why Beth and I weren't already friends. Nora, I was trying to protect both of you. Beth has always been jealous of you. She sees you with this perfect life, two amazing kids. A successful, self-made business. It's everything she's ever wanted in life. I think Beth always thought of me as her dopey little brother, someone she could protect and look out for. And she's always played that role in my life. But then you come out of nowhere, this amazing, brilliant woman, and I think she felt redundant. I've always thought that you two were so similar, uh, not in a weird way. I didn't want to marry my sister or anything like that, but you're both so stubborn, defiant. You two will make a great team, I'm sure of it. We will, but I'm worried about us, Victor. Why did you hide something like that from me? It makes me think that you're capable of hiding other things. I'm sorry, Nora, I really am. And I I'm sorry if I made you feel crazy for thinking that Beth disliked you. I guess I just try and make everyone feel better, but in reality, I'm making things worse. Don't worry, I won't hide anything from you ever again. Thank you, Victor, that means a lot. And as for that cranky neighbor, Rose, I'll be having a conversation with her when I'm home about how appropriate it is to soak someone else's child in water. Yeah, but let's not start something with our neighbors. Uh, not now. You know what? I think I'm coming around to living in the suburbs. Maybe it's not as bad as I think after all. You're an amazing woman, Nora. I love you. I love you too, Victor. Life in the suburbs turned out to be the best life imaginable. Beth and I became the best of friends, and in the years to come, her baby boy became friends with my children, too. It just goes to show that all that is needed to fix a rift is the ability for two people to listen to each other.